Okay, so we're now showing the forecasting helper, which is a monthly forecasting spreadsheet that you can uh, take your call volume and project that through into the future. It's quite a clever bit of software. And uh, I'm with uh, Joe Sparks, who's developed this uh, software for us. So, Joe, do you want to uh, take us through the, the forecasting helper? Do you want to sort of uh, first explain uh, how, how you use it? Okay. Uh, well, we've... You need at least 24 months of data already, so you need to have been collecting uh, information for a couple of years. And once you've got at least that 24 months of data, we can insert that into this first page on the spreadsheet. And then uh, we're going to use some of the features of Excel, um, which has some power to do some solving and things into the future. And uh, from that, we'll be able to get you another 12 uh, months of data for you to forecast into the future. Okay, brilliant. That seems very good. So, do you want to show us? You've got looks like you've got some data in there in a uh, in a graph. Do you want to show uh, you know sort of how you how you put data in if you were doing it manually? I say, for instance, if you had another month's worth of uh, figures there, how you'd put that in and get a forecast? Yeah, just another month in here at the moment, or shall we yeah, replace that goes everything? Up to April 2014. Let's say you've now got May 2014's figures. Absolutely. If we were to scroll down here, yes, we've got May 14 here already. So if we wanted to just add one new period of data for June 14, and uh, we make something up nicely there, say 201,452 calls, and we scroll back up to the top. I think we have June uh, 2013 in there. Oh, yes. So they get entered um, in Excel format of uh, month, day, month, year. That's right, yeah. yes. Uh, so you effectively take the first day of the month. Yeah. So once you've once all that's in, uh, this uh, graph here should uh, be plotting automatically for you. So we've now got um, uh, up till June showing here, and uh, all it's a case of doing now is to click Get Forecast. And uh, you do have to be patient once you've clicked this for the first time, because what Excel is doing now is um, it's using its forecasting tools that it has installed, and it's uh, looking through all of the options, and uh, until it comes to to something that it thinks is the best fit from the information that we've given it. And once it's found it, um, you'll see that uh, a new chart will appear. And uh, your forecasted 12 months of data um, now appear in red on the, on the right-hand side of this graph. And uh, the figures also appear here on the uh, left-hand side of your chart. Uh, for the, from July 2014 to June 2015, it's now predicted based on historical figures what it thinks is going to be in the future. Okay. So if you, for instance, uh, it looks like there's a drop in December there for the couple of years. If you thought that's just a, an anomaly, how would you go in and uh, go in and change that? Um, well, you can you can change uh, data in the original sheet. Um, you could so go you back. Click on the data tab. Is it? Click on the back on the data tab, and there any figures that you thought weren't quite right, or you you so weren't there's happy. So one in say December 13, and again in um, uh, December the following previous year. That's so, right. Uh, I and mean, it may be that that is um, the the seasonality of uh, your data. Is that if that happens in December every year, uh, then it may be that that is true for your season. What would be the seasonal adjustments, and uh, the forecasting method that we're using here um, would t would take account of that fact. It would compare December's in each year, and and it would say, oh yes, well this is always low, and so it would also predict that any future December's were low. Um, if you really thought that one of these dates was wrong, um, then you would have to um, adjust the figure manually. So if you really thought that you didn't have a seasonal adjustment in December and your figures weren't lower in December, uh, you could just go ahead and um, and change the figure here in your original data and, it, and run the forecast again, and you will get a new set of figures at the end. So just say for that December 09 you're on, put in a, a, a value of 138,000 rather than 38,000. Yep. Let's have a look and see what that would do to the... Uh, to the forecast. We've got, now got a spike upwards in 1 December. Um, so we click get forecast on over again and wait patiently for it to look through all of the years we've got. So there is uh, an element now, presumably because this is quite a while ago, that will be averaged out. It will, more. yes. Whereas if we had a, a spike mo more recently, that presumably would echo forward into the future. Yes, and in fact, when we look at this, we really 
we can see that um, based on the forecasting method we've got here that it doesn't think that that is something that's going to happen very frequently and uh, based on the fact that all future Decembers are low um, then uh, yes we're not seeing uh, anything very much different about December 2014. Well let's have a look and, and do a spike then just for the the most recent period um, perhaps set that data back to uh, 38,000 Well, let's try to say um, in both Decembers uh, that we've had recently, changing these um, to have an upward trend instead of a downward one. Now, when we look at our data here, we've now got spikes upwards in December. So let's have a look. Uh, what it thinks might happen in the future now. So how long does it take? If it's about 15, 20 seconds or right, yes. longer than yeah. that? Uh, and you may find that, that that will change based on your the data that you've got and um, and how regular it is. So that seems to go through yeah. about 4,000 sub-problems together. Yeah, yeah. So now you'll see that, yes, it now has predicted that um, December 2014, based on this data, will, will now have an upward spike, not a downward one. Great. Now, we've got some uh, dummy data in there currently. How easy is it, is it to uh, put in some, uh, some real data, like, for instance, some, uh, uh, you know, data you, you, uh, on, say, uh, you know, your own traffic numbers? Okay. Oh, yes, it's very easy to change this, uh, the dummy data that's in here. So if we were to... Uh, select cell A3 uh, right down to where we've got some information in here and if you just press the delete key um, you'll, you might get a message that we've got invalid references because it's uh, it's looking for the data that we've got in there but that's fine if you click OK um, you'll now see that your chart um, is just um, it doesn't know what to plot because there's nothing there um, so if for example you uh, wanted to find some new data and um, I was having a look earlier and found that online we can find the um, traffic statistics for Heathrow Airport. So if we were to, to download some of those traffic statistics and, uh, and open those up in Excel, um, we'll see here that we've got some data from um, January 2005 right up to January 2015. So if we were to grab some of that data out of here and uh, copy it, and that's just, just a straightforward copy, not copy special or any. Yes, if we copy it, and then what I'm going to do when I uh, come into the forecasting spreadsheet is I'm going to paste values uh, okay. just to be certain that uh, we've got um, dates and um, values and, not, and no formulas. Um, so that's the one, two, three on the paste here, and that's some values. And you'll see that's, that's like a paste special then. That's right. Yeah. So um, it's we've now got all of our data entered here. There's some formatting issues here. Um, but that really is just a display. You'll see that the, the data itself is um, is plotted. There's quite a seasonal trend there, which looks like more people in fly out during the summer. In the summer, the yes. So they're all going on holiday in the summer months. <laughs> so um, now we click Get Forecast. And we'll see how long it takes. We've got a little bit more data in here. We'll see whether it takes any longer for it to come up with a solution. Yeah, it's counting it's more slowly to this one. Does it also go up to about 4,000? So, oh, it did about 3,000 that time, 3, I think. And uh, so here we've got um, our next 12 months of, of data here. So we can see that um, it says that, that based on how much is increasing over the years, it's uh, there's an uplift in those 12 months, uh, which so you can see that the general trend is upwards. Uh, and it's also looked at the fact that it's uh, seized over the 12 months. There's uh, some seasonal variation, and you can see that again in the in the predicted results. Wonderful. So, this uh, what uh, method does this use to to do the forecasts? Uh, it's a method of prediction called Holt Winters, uh, or also known as triple exponential smoothing. And um, so there are the three elements to it are um, sort of the level of the data. So based on the, the last figures that you had, uh, that's, that would be used as some baseline or starting point. Um, and then there'd be a seasonal adjustment, which is uh, a monthly forecast. So for example, you're going to compare January to January one year, February to February, March to March, and it would take an average of um, all of those changes. 
Uh, and then additionally to that, um, there is a, is a trend, so to, are the values generally growing or shrinking over time? Um, so all of those three elements are then taken to, uh, into account in this method to, uh, to come up with your next 12 periods of 12, 12 um, data points. Yeah, it certainly looks uh, looks very impressive. So what's the, the best way if someone wants to say forecast out for the next uh, three years for the data is that they run the, the forecast uh, for the next 12 months and then they put those forecast figures back into the Yes, you could do that. So you could take um, these new 12 uh, figures that you've got, um, you could copy those and uh, what we do, we copy those, take them back to the data tab and um, take them to the bottom of your data and copy them in. Oops, what have I got here? Looks like you've got one extra column. One extra column. Oops. And then I'll go right, back up. Perhaps I have to do a paste special on that one, is it? That's right. It may be that um, I needed to copy those two columns separately. So now we've got our predicted um, 12 months, and uh, then now we've got another predicted 12 months. Okay, but so you could, very bit, you could do that iteratively and carry on into, into the future as, as far as you wanted to go. Now, the coding from this, uh, as we um, went through the development process, is quite involved. So it is fixed at a 12 month. It is uh, yes. a 12 yeah. month cycle. It uh, uh, we did have a look at it to see if it was possible to do it for other other seasonal patterns, but uh, really it's very much around the uh, getting the monthly the monthly forecast right and uh, uh, and then what one of the, the beauties of this from what I understand is that you can more or less every additional month you can rerun the forecast to get the very uh, very latest figures on it. You can and, it, and it's much easier to do it in a, on a 12 month basis um, based on the Excel uh, calculations as well there's uh, the solver um, program with inside Excel is called the evolutionary method and um, so based on statistics and um, it's much more simple to do that in, in small sections at a time. So, um, and otherwise, it would take a very, very long time to, to get all that information together to collate things into the future. Um, so it's much easier to stick with just 12. And uh, if you want to forecast any further out, to do that a little bit more as an iterative process. That's wonderful. Now, in terms of uh, getting it working on people's machines, what is it they, because presumably we've got, it, this uses uh, macros and the solver pack uh, in order to get it working. So uh, I think by default macros are turned off and uh, I, I'm not sure if the solver pack is uh, uh, installed. So do you want to take us through uh, how you would set up macros in the solver pack if it's not uh, working out of the box. Okay, when you first download um, a spreadsheet from the internet, uh, the chances are that when you open it, um, you will be given a message that uh, macros are not enabled yet and asking you to enable the content. And that usually appears as a yellow bar across the, the top of your spreadsheet. Um, it's quite difficult for me to, to force that to show it to you now because um, that's already been accepted for the spreadsheet on this machine. So, But you will get a, a yellow stripe across the top of your spreadsheet telling you to enable the content. And you do need to do that for the, for the macros to work. Um, and also uh, what's required is a, an add-in um, which are quite popular add-ins for Excel and you may well already have them installed uh, and they're called the analysis tool pack and um, solver and uh, both of these things give you some um, extended data analysis capability for, for planning into the future. So to use this calculator you need to have both of these add-ins installed and you need to activate them before you can use the calculator for the first time. Um, now there is um, so a document to accompany this uh, spreadsheet which takes you through this in a step-by-step -step way. Um, but really you need to look on, if once you're in Excel, if you look on your data tab um, up here and you look across to the very right hand side you'll be able to see whether data analysis and solver are installed already on Excel because you'll be able to see them on the right hand side here in a little box called analysis. Um, if you don't see that there um, then what we do need to do is take you through to the file menu and into um, options 
and you'll see here add-ins. And uh, you'll see Excel add-ins uh, in this Manage tab at the bottom here. And um, if you look up here at the top section of this, Analysis Toolpack and Analysis Toolpack VBA, um, they're already installed on this machine, so you can see them in this list. Um, if we click Manage Excel add-ins and click Go, um, you'll be able to see what add-ins are already available on your on your computer or in your Excel installation. And we need to make sure that the Analysis Toolpack is ticked and the Solver add-in is ticked. So if you see these as blank checkboxes, you just make to sure, need to make sure that you've, you've ticked here and click OK. So most people have this already in their Excel system. It's just actually not uh, selected in the tick box. To That's correct. It's usually the there. Yes. So if it hasn't been used before, it may be that they're not ticked, but they usually are available. Now, if someone's doing this on an old version of Excel, do they, are these available through the uh, Excel website? or? I would need to check on that, and um, if I can find that information, I'll make sure that it's in the accompanying documents. This okay. okay, brilliant. Uh, now, if someone's running uh, Open Office, uh, presumably this is something that is very much with this, the the solver pack tied to uh, tied to just uh, Excel. It is unfortunately yes. Um, you do need to have Excel to to use this program. It won't work in Open Office. You need to have um, Visual Basic uh, in the background. To uh, there are macros behind making it run automatically along with the solver tool pack, and it, and that is unfortunately uh, just part of Excel. So it looks like overall this is a very useful facility for people and uh, certainly a lot uh, easier than the old method of just getting a, a ruler plotting out your uh, graph and trying to bend uh, some sort of uh, trend line onto that. Uh, the, 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 that actually is remarkably uh, accurate for getting the overall uh, the overall trend but it makes the, the seasonality pieces a lot uh, a lot different. So I think uh, people are going to have some uh, good experience with that. So uh, thank you very much Joe for uh, joining us today and uh, taking us through the, the spreadsheet. Thanks, John T. And uh, hope you in, uh, enjoy uh, using it. We look forward to seeing on the comments box uh, on the uh, website uh, if people have any, uh, any problems with it. Thank you, then. Bye-bye.